So this formula of finding viral videos that work and then still being a creator with your own voice will not only separate you from the crowd, but will also help you build a massive and loyal audience on social media. There's a lot of people in this room like Kenny Duzo, who started out with 300 social media followers, he now has 50,000 social media followers. How much money did you make last month, Clay? Four years ago, started with nothing, zero. Three years later, making 70,000. What was your record breaking month this year, Anthony? $53,000. Harry had 500 followers when we first started. Where's he at now? Almost 50,000. He's got some videos on his page that have like 5,000 people commenting for a fucking keyword. What would that do to your business? I know what it did to Chloe and Harry's because they're in VIP right now and they're making $60,000 a month. The reason that Trent Harrison is speaking on Millionaire Mastermind Sunday is because he had 450,000 followers. He doubled his fucking following in the last six months. One video, you guys, that's all it takes. You're one video away from a completely different life, I'm telling you. You guys traveled a long way to get here. You travel a long way to be here. So be in the fucking room, be present, make conversation, interact with each other. Like as online fitness coaches, it's not like we have a lot of people that understand the lifestyle that we have because the lifestyle that we have is very different. We're making money by posting on our cell phone. It's fucking weird, right? And so your friends and family, when they see you posting as much as you are on social media, some of them do get it, some of them do understand, but everybody in this fucking room understands. So these are your people. Now, obviously you guys are gonna learn a lot from me and Cole and the other speakers as well, but most of all, like you guys are gonna learn from each other. The real value is the connections that you guys are gonna have with one another. All right guys, today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about how to grow a massive social media following that converts into paying clients. Now, I've got a table of contents, so first things first is a commitment to mastery. Second thing is understanding the algorithm. Third thing is finding your voice on social media. Fourth thing is your content creation process. Fifth thing is auditing your own content, finding the one video that changes your life, and then setting goals for social media growth. I don't know how many of you, who, who here has watched me speak before? Yeah! I like to give a lot of value, so get ready to take some notes, okay? So first things first, is the commitment to mastery. Mastery is not a function of genius or talent, it is a function of time and intense focus to a particular field of knowledge. There's a lot of people in this room, like Kenny Duzo, who started out with 300 social media followers, he now has 50,000 social media followers. And so mastery for me, like you don't get good automatically, you get good because you're gonna focus over time. And so you're gonna suck a lot, so let's get that out of the way. Repeat after me, I'm going to suck a lot. And that's okay. That's kind of the point, right? Developing any skill, you guys, takes time. Whether that be leadership, sales, content creation, booking sales calls, knowing that you're gonna suck removes the fear of failure because it isn't something to be avoided. It's something to be revered. It's something to look forward to. A lot of you guys need to put more time into social media, but the reason that you're not doing it is because you're afraid that you're gonna suck. A lot of you guys need to spend more time doing co talking content, and the reason that you're not doing it is because you're afraid that you're gonna suck. Well, guess what? You're fucking gonna, okay? You're gonna suck for a long period of time, but don't worry. What is I suck too. That you've told someone, but they refuse to believe you. I'll go first. If you wanna make money as an online personal trainer, you'll make significantly more, and you'll sign more clients, and you'll have more of an impact if you just focus on creating content, and you forget about building a website, funnels, email lists, or anything like that. Simply by posting twice a day on TikTok, Instagram Reels, and Facebook Reels, that one idea alone will 10X your business rather than trying to build a website or focusing on ads or anything else. If you don't believe me, try it out for yourself for 30 days and watch what happens to your business. Follow for more. Ah, oh, 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 I fucking hated watching that. Dude, that was March 2022. Like that was not that long ago compared to a video now where I don't suck as much. Can we play that one? So they realize that I don't suck as much? <laughs> Did you know that Instagram creators are stealing your attention by using this hack? It's called visual misdirection. This gives you something to focus on while I'm delivering the value. Try it out in your next video and follow Hi. me for more value. Dude, that was literally in two years. Two years, and I was like, I've always been good at long form content. Pat myself on the back, those of you guys that follow my podcast. But for some reason, I just didn't know how to get in front of a camera and just speak. And I didn't think it was important. So I would do those like six second stupid trending audio things that a lot of you guys do. I'm not gonna razz on you. And then I watched Cole go super viral. And I was like, okay, maybe I should start paying attention. Then I watched my wife go super viral and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm definitely getting left behind. And so you gotta, uh, you gotta understand that you're gonna suck and that's okay, okay? So write this down, process driven behavior. If you wanna get really good at content, then you need to get really good at being committed to the process. I don't look at the views on each individual video that I have. I look at the views over an extended period of time. 
And so I'm just so committed to the process of posting three times a day, every day, seven days a week. And over time, I audit what's good and what's bad. So process-driven behavior is behavior that is not predicated on achieving a certain outcome instantly. Rather, it's a behavior that we do because we know in the process of taking that action, it will ultimately lead to more success in that arena. Just like going to the gym. The reason you go to the gym is because you know it makes you feel better, look better, et cetera. And it's not like, Everybody loves getting a juicy pump. That's not fun, I'm not gonna lie. But that's not the only reason that you go to the gym. The reason that you go to the gym over an extended period of time is because you understand that the process of going to the gym is going to improve you over time, which is the exact same mindset around content. You must commit to the process of posting content because you know it's gonna help you make more money, build a life of freedom for yourself, and achieve every dream you've ever had for yourself. The idea of overnight success is a fucking lie. Who here knows who Trent Harrison is? Make some noise. Trizzle yeah. Man Fitness. This guy said he can't even go to the grocery store anymore without being like, Trizzle Man. <laughs> but dude, Trent Harrison's been with us for five years and he's made 2,887 posts. A lot of you guys have made 200 social media posts and you're like, why am I not fucking viral yet? You haven't put in the reps, that's why. Like Trent has been so consistent for an extended period of time and eventually when you're that consistent, you just get good. So you guys just need to make the decision that nobody in this space is better than you. You are the fucking best coach to serve your avatar because you are the best, you are studying, you're perfecting your craft and you're not worrying about the fucking views. Guys, you're gonna suck every day until one day you don't. Clayton Snyder started out his Instagram account when he first started with us, zero social media followers. And he just, he just decided, I'm gonna be the coach for busy moms. Now Clayton, what was, how much money did you make last month, Clay? $70,000. $70,000. <laughs> but he just decided. And the funny thing is, Clay, when you first came to our events like two years ago, how much were you making like two years ago, three years ago? Like, What about four years ago? Zero. Zero, so four years ago started with nothing, zero. A year later, making 15K. Three years later, making 70,000. The only thing that he did is he just decided, I'm the best fucking coach for busy moms. There's nobody better than me. And it doesn't matter what outside objective opinion is. Clayton just made the decision and now he's that person. You must commit to the process regardless of the outcome. And you have to make the decision that you are the best and then allow your actions that follow to prove that. Cool, so step number two, we're gonna talk about understanding the algorithm. Facebook makes $427 million per day on advertising revenue. That's $17.7 .7 million per hour, $296,000 per minute, and $4,942 per second. Why is this important? Because you need to understand the business of Facebook and Instagram because that's the platform that you're trying to make money on. Does that make sense? So the purpose of Facebook and Instagram algorithm is to maximize user, user engagement, which keeps people on the platform for longer because when you are on their platform for longer, they can sell more of your attention to advertisers. Are you guys with me? So you need to understand the game that you're playing. Every fucking second in your video matters. Every single one. Which is why if you've ever been to a content audit with me in the 10K Mastermind, well, they actually pod chats. They turn into fucking content audits, but we're not talking about that right now. But like, I'm looking at every fucking second of your video. I'm like, that shouldn't be there. That shouldn't be there. That shouldn't be there. And it matters that much because Facebook thinks it does. They make $4,000 a fucking second, right? And so if your engagement for whatever reason isn't popping, it's probably because you have one, two, three, four, five seconds in your video that shouldn't fucking be there, which makes the difference between it going viral and not. You need to understand the game that you're playing. Listen, the only reason that your content is not getting shown to more people is it's not very fucking good. Okay? I'm sorry. I'm that fucking guy. I don't have to tell you. Because if it, was a, if it was, objectively speaking, Facebook and Instagram would be sharing it out to a wider audience <clears throat> because they're gonna make more money by doing so. The algorithm doesn't hate you. The algorithm's there to make money. And so the algorithm is gonna show Trent Harrison because Trent Harrison is keeping people on the platform for longer. Make sense? All you need to do with your content is figure out how do I get it more engaging so people actually watch? How do I be more exciting, which we're gonna talk about? How do I cut out all of, all of the unnecessary bullshit so that my content's good so it gets shared to a wider audience? Now, as much as this sucks to admit, because who here, um, and, and I'm not gonna call on you, I'm not gonna blame shame you, but who here has ever said the algorithm hates me? Raise your fucking hands, all of you, nice and hot. Some of you guys that have your hands down are fucking liars, and I know it, okay? 
The algorithm does not hate you. Your content just sucks. <clears throat> and the good news, my friends, is that puts all of the control in your hands. Because I used to say that too. Cole's popping off on social media. <clears throat> Kirsten's popping off on social media. I'm like, the algorithm hates me. Like, it's because Kirsten has big boobs and tattoos and I fucking, <laughs> I did, that's what I thought. I'm like, Cole's fucking aggressive as fuck. So maybe if I get aggressive like that, then the algorithm will like me too. No longer are you at the mercy of some unforeseen force that dictates whether or not you make money. It is all within your control. The more that you understand the algorithm and the purpose of the algorithm, the more that you'll be motivated to create content that maximizes user engagement. I'm completely like unattached to the outcome of my content. I post content, who here has ever posted a piece of content you're like, that was good. And then the algorithm's like, no it wasn't. <laughs> no it wasn't. I'm completely unattached though. Like it doesn't matter to me. If something doesn't pop and I thought it was going to, I'm like, well, on to the next one. It has like, I, I don't take anything personally. And like, yes, I work really fucking hard on my content, but if it doesn't pop, I'm not like, oh my God, I'm such a piece of shit. Like, it doesn't matter. Cool, so write these down. These are the rules of the game. Number one, user engagement. The algorithm pr prioritizes content that keeps user engaged with more likes, comments, shares, and watch time. By increasing view engagement, Facebook can show more ads to users without making the platform seem overly commercialized. And so the more that your content gets people to engage, the more that it's fun and entertaining to watch, and somebody's scrolling through your newsfeed and they're having a good time, and Facebook just like slips a little ad in there, and you don't even notice, because you're engaged. Does that make sense? Yeah. So your content needs to maximize user engagement. <clears throat> Number two is personalization. The algorithm uses data on users' behavior to personalize their newsfeed. How many of you guys have ever watched like a funny video and then all of a sudden the fucking algorithm's just showing you all funny videos and you're like, ah, f now I'm here, right? I've done that, I've done that. I go down the rabbit hole. Or I'm like looking for relationship content for me and Curse and then all of a sudden I'm like seeing all these like sappy love stories because I looked up like relationships and I'm like, I did not want to do this, okay? But the reason the algorithm does that is because they personalize your content, which is why it's also very important to create a niche, right? Because the reason that Clayton Snyder's content pops off is because the algorithm understands the type of content that he's posting and it's showing it to women like that. Women that are searching for that stuff. So the algorithm learns you and it's beneficial to learn you because if they learn you and then they send your content to busy moms, busy moms are on the platform for longer, which means they get to sell more advertising dollars, which also means Clayton makes a lot more money. Make sense? This is why you need to niche. Cool. Next is increased ad revenue. The higher user engagement on the platform, the more opportunities Facebook and Instagram has to place ads. And in return for giving Facebook and Instagram what, you, what they want, which is more money, they're gonna give you what you want. More views, more reach, more followers, because you are ultimately helping them with their goal of making more money. Make sense? <clears throat> Algorithm is like, it doesn't hate anyone. It's very unbiased. If your content's good, it'll show it. If it's not, it won't, period. Number three, finding your voice on social media. Let's take it back to this core idea that you're gonna suck, okay? And I, th I think the reason this is important to talk about is because the only way that you're ever gonna find your voice on social media is repetition over repetition over repetition over repetition, right? And I know that's so fucking obvious, no shit, Brian. So if it's that obvious, why aren't you posting one or two times a day every day on social media, right? No shit. No sh why aren't you doing it, right? The thing about finding your voice is you actually have to practice speaking to the camera because in a world where AI is coming and in a world where everybody's hiding behind faceless trends, by you being the person that actually speaks to the camera, you start separating yourself from everybody else. I actually wanna give a big shout out to Sarah Reimer, who's in the audience. Because Sarah, yeah, Sarah's dope. Because Sarah, when she first started, she came to the Elite Mansion Mastermind, content was, not the best, right? We'll say that. But she was practicing every day, one or two videos every day, bam, 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 bam. Now Sarah's going viral consistently. So she was willing to suck for like two to three months to now get to a place where like her content's good and like 10 to 20,000 views on her videos. Where it was like, it was one to 2,000, now it's 10 to 20,000. And in six months, it's gonna be 30 to 50,000. You guys get that? But you have to be just like, you have to just walk into it and be like, I'm gonna fucking suck. And that's okay. Right? And if you do six second videos, you look like every other dork on the platform and that's why you're not growing. So, 
Thought I'd throw that in there for a second. Okay, cool. Now, this isn't just me telling you to be yourself because you can read that on any self-help book on the planet. This is me reminding you that the Facebook and Instagram algorithm is a game, and if you wanna grow on the platform, you need to start playing by the rules, all right? And the rules are that your content has to be engaging, entertaining, fun to watch, and cause users to stay on the platform for longer so they can sell more of your attention to advertisers. Perfect example of this is reality TV. Who here watches reality TV shows? Raise your hand. Yeah, I know you fucking cursed to Mark, okay, I put you in here. Kirsten Mark definitely watches reality TV. Love Island's on my TV all the time. But whatever, Love Island, Love is Blind, potato, potato. I kind of like Love is Blind now, it's fucked up. I hated it. So when we watch reality TV, we know that it's not real, right? Like we know it's not real, like it's real, okay. We know it's not real. They're, they're putting together the scenes that are gonna cause the most drama and the most tension and they choose the characters that are gonna be the most high drama and high stakes and that keeps our attention though, right? So I call it the Love Island effect. <clears throat> there's scenarios that come up on the show that keep us engaged because there's like drama. They're like, oh my God, what's he gonna say to her? <laughs> Does she know that he, she's kissing him too? Like what the f right? So there's tension and all these elements make the reality TV show literally addicting to watch. And I know that because it has my wife by the balls, okay? So you need to take that element into your content. Who here watches my content and I'm like, you're a f dork if you do this. There's a reason I do that. I'm like, I'm keeping y'all entertained, whether or not you like it, right? So you need to take that element into your content. So no, do not be yourself, okay? Be your most entertaining self. Be your most cocky self. Be your over the top self. Be your condescending self. Be your sarcastic self. Be your bubbly self. Be fucking entertaining to watch. Make sense? Yeah. Be entertaining to watch. Anthony Anasmov is the perfect example of exaggerating. Who here has seen Anthony's content? Where is, where is Anthony? Anthony, come up here. Come here, Anthony. Come here, Anthony. Come here, Anthony. Come here, Anthony. Since your video isn't playing, I'm gonna make you do it in front of everyone. <laughs> okay, so I drink sugar-filled energy drinks all the time. Tell me that I'm fine. This is entertaining to watch, okay? If you drink energy drinks, keep going. I drink them every day. <laughs> you got it, you got it. If you drink energy drinks, your heart's gonna fucking explode. <laughs> Give me one more line, one more line. Do it. Okay, do it. I drink six of these a day. <laughs> okay, okay. Rip me from my tricep extensions. Do this. You can actually, have, you can have that. If you do tricep extensions like this, you're not gonna grow. Why? Because you're not stretching. You guys get that? But look how he fucking talks normally. Thank you for coming up here. I appreciate you. You want to do the rest of the video? You can if you want. What, this video? No, the tricep extension video, yeah. <laughs> Make some noise for Anthony. <laughs> Anthony is entertaining to watch. <laughs> He's entertaining to watch. Which is, I wish his fucking video was playing. I'm pissed it's not. Damn it. It's fucking funny. He's not very calm and relaxed in, in, in these videos, but when you talk to him in person, like, he's very calm and relaxed. But in his fucking videos, now you might not be like that, okay? And I'm not saying you need to be like that, but we told that, like, it wasn't me actually, it was fucking Cole. Cole told Anthony, he's like, your videos are fucking boring, bro. Like, I, like, I don't know what to tell you. The reason they're not performing well is because they're just boring as fuck. And he's like, well, like, that's how I talk. And Cole's like, well, how you talk is fucking boring. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. So, but now, Anthony, how much money did you make? What was your record breaking month this year, Anthony? $53,000. If you build an audience, everything else is easy. Do you guys get that? If you build an audience, all the other problems that you guys face in your business are easy. If you don't have an audience, everything in your business is fucking hard. Now, it's gonna feel super weird adding your personality and exaggerating some shit that you're saying to your videos. And the reason is, is because it's uncomfortable and it's not natural or normal for you, right? It's not natural or normal for you to be more entertaining. I'm not razzing you. I'm just telling you what the algorithm's telling you. Which is literally the fucking point. 
If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always gotten. You need to change it up. Every video session that you guys film, I want you to practice just being a little bit extra. Just a little bit extra. Just a little bit more enthusiasm. <clears throat> a little bit more passion. A little bit more energy. A little bit more sarcasm, right? Just a little bit more. <clears throat> A little bit extra with your sass, with your gestures. If you drink energy drinks, oh, you are up, right? Just a little bit extra. And slowly over time, your videos will get more engagement, more likes, more shares, more comments, more saves, and more follows. Number four, creating your content strategy. Now, this one is gonna require you to do some browsing of social media. Like, you guys need to get into research mode when it comes to your content. And I call it stealing like an artist. Now, stealing like an artist is based on the fact that they're, all creative work builds on something that came before. So those of you guys that are trying to come up with original content ideas and just come up with original content ideas, like, dude, like, Dawson's already viral. Trent's already viral. There's people in this room that have already figured it out. So why don't you go to their content, figure out what they're doing. Chloe and Harrison are already viral. Like, and I know that all my best clients are like, fuck you, stop saying my name. People are copying my shit. I get it. But what you gotta do is like, you guys are surrounded by thousands of online personal trainers that are crushing with your content. You need to start figuring out the people that are in your niche, your demographic, that are creating high value content and just start watching their content. Just watch their content. Like I enjoy watching Trent's content. I'm like, it's just engaging. I'm like, I like learning from it. It's the same thing with Chloe and Harry. I enjoy watching their content. It's fun. It's also fun because I remember when it wasn't as good, literally six months ago. Like how, vi like how many, Harry had 500 followers when we first started, right? 500. 500, and where's he at now? Almost 50,000. He's got some videos on his page that have like 5,000 people commenting for a fucking keyword. What would that do to your business, right? I know what it did to Chloe and Harry's because they're in VIP right now and they're making $60,000 a month, right? <laughs> Okay, so there's a big difference between being insp like grabbing inspiration and straight up plagiarizing, okay? So don't plagiarize. I just wanna put this out there. So if Kirsten Mark has a video and you say the exact same words in the video, that is plagiarizing, right? But if Kirsten Mark has a video and you steal the hook and then you add your own opinion, that's not plagiarizing. You guys get what I'm saying? So there's a big difference between taking inspiration and plagiarizing, and I wanna make sure I go over that. So in order to steal like an artist, here's what you need to look for. So first things first is you wanna look for the subject matter of the video. Subject matter of the video. Because yes, you can talk about nutrition, but if you go watch some of Trent's best performing content, he's in the grocery store, and the, the subject matter of the video isn't nutrition, he's giving them a grocery list for fat loss. So the subject matter of the video. All right, so that's what we wanna look for. Um, yes, like as an example, if you see somebody viral at, at the gym with a workout, yes, they're at the gym with the workout, but what is the actual subject matter of the video that they're talking about in the workout? So I'm looking for viral subject matter. I'm also looking for the first three seconds of the video. So again, in the 10K Mastermind, if you're on pod chats, you see me do this, I'll just scroll through the first three seconds of your video and I'm like, boring, 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 that's why you're not viral. First three seconds, so somebody that's viral like, go to Anthony Anismov's page. I'm putting you on blast, Anthony. I don't even care, bro. Fuck you. Go to Anthony's page and just watch the first three seconds of his videos. Just go, first three seconds, first three seconds, first three seconds, first three seconds. And like, very quickly, you guys are gonna understand why he's viral. Because the first three seconds of his videos are fucking entertaining. They're fun to watch. The title on screen is something that you wanna steal from viral videos, too. Because sometimes, like, I've had videos where I change the title, and because I change the title, it goes viral. So if you see a viral video, see how they like laid out the, their thumbnail. And the thumbnail is like in the first three seconds, like the writing on the screen, what were the words that they used in the writing on the screen? Because sometimes that makes a big difference. <clears throat> so the title, the words on the screen. Where the video is filmed, right? I could talk about nutrition, or I could be in the uh, grocery store aisle with a bunch of like snacks around me, and I could talk about how these snacks are making you fat. So where's, where's the video actually filmed? What's the lighting? This is a big one <clears throat> that a lot of you guys don't get right. If your lighting in your video is bad, <laughs> video's gonna do shit right away. Doesn't matter how hard you work in the video. So you guys need to get good lighting. If you don't have the money to have like a professional photographer or videographer, film in front of a fucking window, right? Just literally film all your videos in front of a window, you're gonna have the natural light. 
If you're in the gym, just make sure you've got good lighting when you're recording, it's important. And the scene changes in the video. And sometimes when you're doing like viral hook, viral hacking, you're gonna find that somebody does a video that goes turbo viral and there's like no scene changes. What that means for me is I'm like, I'm just gonna make this video 10 times better. So somebody, cause who here has ever seen a viral video where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna do exactly that cause that's viral, right? But like my rule of thumb is that like I, the, I follow rules. And so every 1.5, here's a rule. Every 1.5 to three seconds, the scene should be changing in your videos. And you probably heard me say that before, but go look at your content right after this and ask yourself if the scene changes every 1.5 to three seconds. If it does, I bet you that your content's doing better than most. If it doesn't, I bet you that's why. So here's how to find your creators to steal from. Number one, who is in your niche? So who is in your demographic? Search content for creators that are speaking to that specific niche. Number two, <clears throat> this one's actually really easy to do. Type in keywords related to your niche. Instagram will load the best performing creators and the best performing content. Number three, go to their page and I want you to watch and consume their content. Study the hooks of those viral videos, look at the engagement in those videos. The videos that have crazy engagement steal that content style. We're gonna do an exercise. Everybody grab your phones. Everybody pull out your phones. Think about your niche and I just want you to search a keyword related to your niche. Any keyword related to your niche. Once you do that, Instagram's gonna load a bunch of their best performing content. I just want you to click on the Reels tab and I want you to scroll through the Reels. Just scroll through. These are some of the best uh, performing Reels in your niche. So find a video that you like, click on their page. This is how you're gonna find creators. <clears throat> Cause most of you guys will steal viral videos but you won't actually steal the pages. But if I find a video that's good, I'm gonna go to the person's page and I'm gonna see what they're doing on their page. What is their content about? What's their best performing content? This is actually really good for fitness creators because <clears throat> most fitness creators that create viral content do those like stupid six second words on screen bullshit. So sometimes I'll find a creator that does like a six second words on screen video and I'm like, I'm gonna just do that as a talking video, right? So like a lot of people in my industry, they do like chat GPT prompts, <clears throat> but they're like, steal this chat GPT prompt and they're like, read the caption. And I'm like, idiot. So then I just take that same prompt and I just deliver it in a talking video and that video goes viral. Get it? So like sometimes some, some people will put like, if you're in your 40s, these are the three mistakes to avoid and it's just like a B-roll shot of them. I'll take that video and I'll do a talking video about that. Make sense? This is how I get viral ideas. You can search fat loss tips for women, weight loss tips for women, busy moms, fitness tips, losing weight for women, and each one of these keywords would give me a different set of content ideas to search and grab. And then what I do is I put all of my content ideas in a little notes app. This is literally how I came up with 80% of my content ideas when I first started, is off of other people's shit. This is the only strategy that I followed that took me from 10,000 followers to 100,000 followers. This is what I learned from Devin Giotto. And you guys remember Devin? He's a G, right? Love that guy. This was the thing he taught me. You guys know who the Instacoach Mike is? Everybody know who that is? So me and Cole worked with Instacoach Mike as well and this was basically the main thing he taught us. Find viral videos, recreate them. Same thing Devin, find viral videos, recreate them. After a while, Cole and I were like, find viral videos, recreate them, right? <laughs> so if everybody else is doing it, that's probably what we should be doing. So I take the ideas, I put them in my notes app. Now, why would you try to come up with viral video ideas yourself when somebody else has already done it? Take what's already proven to go viral and just put your own spin on it. So I took a viral whiteboard video. So if you guys see, it says, uh, don't do this, or five, five words to never say in marketing. So it says, don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this. I did the same fucking thing and I'm like, four words to never say in marketing. Don't say $100, say 99. Don't say buy now, say three spots left. Don't say discount, say, say 20%. Don't say blah, 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 blah. And I'm doing fun shit. I'm like throwing books around and stuff. That one video, one video got me 18,000 followers. Wow. One video, wow. one fucking video. Wow. That was viral, had 6 million views. I'm like, I like that very much. And then I took that idea and I fucking did a talking video about it. And it wasn't the exact same language. I actually put some of my own spin on it, which is why I wish the video would play, but my life, it's whatever. And then 18,000 followers from one video from one video, okay? This is what you guys should be doing. Find viral topics, find viral videos, and then how can you take them and put your own spin on them? So for value content, do this. Until you find your own voice and your own flow with content. This is 50 to 80% of your content strategy. Like when you get to Trent Harrison's level, Trent Harrison's not like, what are some viral video ideas? Like, Trent's just viral, okay? Everything he does is viral. 
So once you find your own voice, you don't necessarily need to do this as much, but even for me, you guys, like, I still fucking do this. And I, I know what goes viral and what doesn't, so like I'm, like I'm very aware of it, so I can write my own content, but I still find inspiration from other creators. The other 20 to 50% of your content strategy is a mixture of connection-based content, proof-based content, and content that is unique to you and you alone. And this is important because I feel like a lot of creators, what they do, and me and Kirsten talk about this, is they're not original. You guys are just like copy and paste from everybody else. So even if I grab a viral video idea, I'm not gonna do the exact fucking same thing because Brian Mark isn't the same dude. I'm just gonna take that video idea and I'm gonna, I'm gonna Brian Mark it. And so you guys need to do that with your content as well. It's like find a video idea and be like, I'm gonna add my own like Diana Benitez to this shit. You know, I'm gonna add some Latina sass to this shit. You know what I'm saying? So this formula of finding viral videos that work and then still being a creator with your own voice will not only separate you from the crowd, but will also help you build a massive and loyal audience on social media. So find viral topics, recreate them, and then start speaking those viral topics with your own voice. Find your own content style through repetition, repetition, repetition. You will build an audience. Cool. Step number five, the content creation process. Now there's four steps in the content creation process in my opinion. Number one is research, and we just covered that. Number two is scripting. Number three is recording. Number four is editing. Let's get into it. Scripting your videos. Why do you guys work out five times a week? Because you schedule it in your calendar. This is so, like I'm telling you, this is so second nature to me that I feel like it's stupid to put in here. But who here scripts their videos every single week for like two, three hours? All of your fucking hands should be up if you want to make money on social media. Get it? So like it is something that I feel so, it's like brushing my teeth to me. I would never not brush my teeth. Kirsten brushes hers like four times a day. She's a neat freak, whatever. Now you need to have that same level of importance. I love being able to blast and you can't defend yourself. It's the best. <laughs> Um, you need to have that same level of importance when it comes down to sitting down and scripting your videos, okay? Now, I, I highly recommend doing this in a creative state, meaning that you turn off your notifications on your phone, you get some headphones on, you sit in a place where you'll be undisturbed, and then you can sit down and get into a flow. So scripting your videos, undisturbed, like I'm just gonna work on this shit and I'm not gonna let anybody interrupt me, like I don't answer my phone, I don't answer my text, if I'm writing a speech, or if I'm doing some like uninterrupted work, like you cannot reach me. That's how you get into flow. Now, I would highly recommend that you script a bare minimum of seven videos per week. And I would block off two hours and I would batch write seven content scripts and bam, you're done. The more that you do it, the faster you'll get it in. You must block off time in your calendar to make this happen, otherwise you will not grow on social media. Recording your videos. Just like scripting your videos, you guys need to make recording a priority in your calendar. Who here skips the gym regularly? <laughs> Trick question, right? Who here batch records all their content? Raise your hand. Get it? Like you need to make it a priority, once a week. If you do not, you'll end up putting off to last minute, which makes you inconsistent with your social media and ultimately that's a rat recipe for disaster and lack of momentum. Without consistency, nothing is possible. Somebody was talking to me um, earlier on today and they're like, I just started my online coaching business. What advice would you give me? I'm just getting started. I was like, be more consistent than everybody else. Super boring, right? Be more consistent than everybody else. That's the only reason that Cole and I are here today, is consistency. I just outworked everyone. And if you want to be the best in your space, you just need to outwork everyone. And the reason that answer is not sexy and nobody likes hearing it is because they're like, but I want fucking results now. That's not how life works, okay? <laughs> Too fucking bad. Consistency over time is what separates you from everybody else. And so if you wanna go viral with your content, you must make time for it every single fucking week. And like, I don't, listen, there was a period in time for like a year and a half, two years, where all of my content was performing shit compared to Kirsten's and Cole's, and I'm still sitting there writing seven scripts a week and I'm recording, I'm like, this is fucking stupid. Like, uh, but I just did the reps, right? Repetition, 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 repetition. And recording your videos. So block off time once a week to batch record all of your videos. The ideal scenario is that you have somebody record your videos for you, so make a friend or something. Um, this, <laughs> this way, <laughs> <laughs> this way your videos just aren't you in a tripod in a kitchen, they actually feel more dynamic and there's movement in the videos to capture attention. When recording, I would recommend that you follow the 1.5 to 3 second rule, meaning you're changing scenes every 1.5 to 3 seconds. Sometimes that's hard to do while you're actually recording, and so in the post edit, every 1.5 to 3 seconds, slow zoom, jump cuts, like you guys need to keep people's attention. Okay, so Marie Magda, her videos change every 1.5 to 3 seconds, and the best part, is that, so I asked her about her content creation process because I think it's very unique. So she's talking about 
her goal building muscle so that the first scene's her in the gym, the second scene she's actually at her house in a completely different outfit. And then the third scene, she's like out for a walk in a completely different outfit. And then the fourth scene, she's back in the gym. And then the fifth scene, she's in her house in a completely different outfit. So the whole video, you're just like, what the fuck is going on? But it's very engaging. Maureen, how many followers have you grown on social media in the last three months? Where are you? 20,000 extra followers in the last three months. Content, 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 content. She's just changing the scene. And if you guys, what's your Instagram, Maureen? So people can follow. Fitness Unicorn. You guys can go watch her content because apparently my shit's broken and I can't show you the videos, but that's okay. That's life. Her, her content is very good. Editing your videos. Let's face it, you suck ass at video editing, okay? It's true. You know, you're here to have big biceps and show other people how to big, have big biceps, so leave the video editing to the pros. And the best app that you guys can use is called Submagic. I would recommend submagic.co, it's $34 a month. And who here knows who Kenny is? Kenny Duzo, raise your hand. Yeah, Coach Kenny. Kenny Duzo uses this to edit all of his videos and Kenny's videos are awesome. And he's working with some of the top ranked UFC fighters in the world, so use it. I'm not affiliated with it, I just think it's an awesome app. Once you're done filming your videos, start playing around with Submagic and keep these rules in mind, okay? These are the rules for editing. Number one, simple is better. These are the rules, take a screenshot, write them down. Simple is better, okay? The simpler your video is, the better it'll perform. Number two, the B-rolls, okay? So it was like B-rolls of like random ass shots of like this fitness chick doing a push up, take those out, okay? You don't need those in there. Um, number three is to add music in Instagram. Especially when you guys are first getting started, I know that you guys see my content with original audio, but I have a brand now. When I didn't have a brand, I was using trending audios to pop off. I'd find whatever audios were trending and I would add that to the background of my music because like, there might, like that video might take off just because it has the trending audio. Number four, every 1.5 to three seconds, add an effect if the scene does not change. So my add an effect is like slow zoom, jump cut, like I need to be fucking entertained when I watch your video. And again, if you came to 10K Mastermind Pod Chats, you see me, like I'm just absolutely ruthless with this. Number six, auditing your own content. I'm gonna teach you guys how to audit your own videos. Now it's time to do an honest self-assessment of your videos. And I think comparison is the only the thief of joy, only if you forget how fucking powerful you are. So, meaning if one person is doing it, that means it can be done, and it can be done by you, all right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at a great content creator, and my, one of my favorite great content creators is fucking Trent Harrison. So number one is the lighting in the video. Look at the lighting in the video. It's fucking clean, it's well lit, he's, he's looking juicy and jacked as he always is. Number two is the hook in the video. How good is the hook in the video compared to Trent's? Number three is the subject matter of the video. How valuable is your video compared to Trent's? Number four is the personality in your video. How much personality is in your video compared to Trent's? And number five is the scene changes. How are the scene changes compared to Trent's? So what we're gonna do is I want everyone to go to Trizzle Man Fitness. Pull out your phones, go to Trizzle Man Fitness. Once you're on his page, I want you to watch one of his most recent videos. Once you're done doing that and you've seen it, just raise your hand. I want you to watch one of his most recent videos and then I want you to raise your hand. Okay, now that you've done that, go to your social media page and I want you to watch it. Watch one of your videos, your most recent videos. And I want you to compare what you just watched to Trent's. How good is the lighting in your videos compared to Trent's? How good is the hook in your video compared to Trent? The subject matter of the video, how valuable is the video compared to Trent's? The personality in your video, how much of your personality did you add compared to Trent's? The scene changes in your video, how are your scene changes compared to Trent's? You guys get this? It's an honest self-assessment of your own content. It doesn't mean that you suck, it just means your content does. <laughs> And again, that's a good thing because that means you're in full control, right? Trent wasn't always good at talking on camera. He used to just do swipe workouts, but he got good at talking on camera. So this is how you're gonna compare yourself. It's like, do an unbiased assessment, and Trent is just one example. If obviously, if you are, you know, women empowerment, you're a female, you wanna find some high-level fitness creators. Heather Wolk is a fucking very high-level fitness creator. Uh, Kristen Martell, Kristen Mark, whoa. Martel, oh my God, we need to talk later. <laughs> I f***ed that up. Um, uh, Kirsten Marks is a very high level uh, fitness creator, so like find inspos in your niche and watch their content, then go watch yours. Watch theirs, watch yours. Watch theirs, watch yours. Watch theirs, watch yours. This will give you an honest self-assessment of how you're performing on social media, and it will tell you exactly what you need to fix and make better. Make sense? Perfect. Now. Another thing I just want to say with this is like, it's going to suck at first, right? Because you're going to watch Trent's video or Heather's video or Curse's video and you're going to be like, well, I'm not that good, you know? 
but the goal is to get that good. Make sense? So like right now, let's say, you know, Kirsten Mark's a 10 out of 10 creator and like you look at your video and you're like, holy fuck, I'm only a three. The goal is to be a four by next month and then a five the month after that and then a six the month after that and then a seven the month after that. Then all of a sudden your videos start going viral and all of a sudden I'm on stage talking about Clayton Snyder because his content's sick, right? So like over time, you just get better and better and better and better. Make sense? Cool. Next thing we're gonna do is analyze average view volume over a three month time horizon. So here's the exercise right now. Open up your Instagram, scroll over the Reels tab, and scroll back, literally just fucking scroll back. Two months, three months, bam, bam, bam. Two or three months, bam, 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 bam. Do a bunch of scrolls. Once you're two or three months back, I want you to take a screenshot. Take a screenshot of your view volume. Then, I want you to scroll back to the top of your fucking Instagram, to your most recent videos, take a screenshot of the view volume. Okay, so now you've got both of those screenshots in your camera roll. I want you to go open your camera roll and I want you to scroll back and forth. Is the average view volume increasing over time, yes or no? Raise your hand if yes. That means your content is performing better than it was before. Raise your hand if no. That means you need to work on your fucking content, right? It's really simple. It's like this is how you know if your content's getting better or not. If your views are going down, your content is not getting better. It's not because the algorithm hates you, it's not because you suck, it's not because of anything else other than you need to work on your content, okay? And somebody was asking me the other day, he's like, bro, you know, I've been stuck, you know, at 5K a month for a while now. He's like, what do you think I should do? I was like, build an audience. He's like, but call us. I'm like, yeah, but build a fucking audience. He's like, but I need to book, I need to sell more clients. I'm like, build an audience. Like when you have an audience, it's not hard to book calls, right? It's fucking easy. Trent, how many calls did you book last week? 40 calls last week. When you have an audience, you don't need to worry about how many calls am I gonna book this week? You need to worry about how do I qualify these motherfuckers because everybody wants free shit. This is my average views a few months ago, 11K, 15K, 25K, 24K, 37K, 33K, 32K, 32K. Then recently, 160, 14, 22, 54, 34, 20, 16, 116, 115. Average views increasing, right? Average views increasing, AKA content is getting better. Perfect, this is, this is how you audit your own content, okay? This is how you audit your own content. And raise your hand if your average view volume is increasing one more time, nice and high. Yeah, you guys are working on your content. I, and keep your hand up, if, keep your hand up. Now, keep your hand up if you've just been working on your content recently and it's like starting to pop and you're like, you've been putting in the fucking effort. Look around, it's the people that have their hands up are the ones that are actually putting in the fucking work on their content. They're like, I'm going to get better. I'm going to master this. Now raise your hand if your view volume is stagnant. That This is an honest look in the mirror. Be like, I need to work on this. This is gonna be my primary focus for the next three to six months. And like three to six months from now, you're gonna to come to me and you're gonna be like, I fucking listen to you and now I'm, I have 10,000 extra followers, thank you. I don't have to worry about booking sales calls anymore, thank you. Build an audience, you guys. Finally, we're gonna analyze average view volume over a 30 day time horizon. This is how we're gonna know what's working on our content right now. Do me a favor, I want you guys to scroll through the last 30 videos you post on your Instagram Reels, and I want you to find top five top performing videos. Actually, we'll just do one, do two top performing videos for the purpose of this exercise. Now here's what to look for. What was the hook in the video? What was the video about? Was it a specific location? How was your energy in the video? How was the lighting? Was there key words or phrases that you were saying? So what was the hook? What was the video about? Was there a specific location? How was your energy? How was the lighting? And was there keywords? I also, I'm gonna put number seven. What was the writing on the screen? What was the writing on the screen? Because sometimes the writing on the screen will make a big fucking difference. That's what to look for when you're auditing your own content. Analyzing your best performing content ideas is one of the simplest and easiest ways to become better at content. The algorithm is literally telling you what your audience wants. You just need to pay attention. Get better with every filming session. Repeat after me, 1% better every day. 1% better every day. Say like you fucking mean it. 1% better every day. 1% better every day. That's the mindset, okay? That's the mindset. It's like every filming session I go into, even if I'm having a bad day, which believe it or not, I have bad days just like you, even if I'm not feeling it, which my videographer can attest to this, sometimes he comes over to my house and I'm like, get the f out of here, okay? And Nick's just showing up with a smile. He's like, I am so excited to film three YouTubes with you today. I'm like, you need to leave my fucking house, okay? But I just put on that fucking, ah, I'm here to do content. I just put on the fucking face and I do it. 1% better every day. It doesn't matter how the fuck 
you feel. Because the people that I pay my mortgage to for my fucking house aren't gonna come to me and be like, were you feeling like doing the work that you wanted to do? I know that you were super demotivated, so like, I know that you missed a few recording sessions, so maybe you don't have to pay your mortgages this month. And like, no, that doesn't happen. And so every day I show the fuck up to my content and I'm 1% better every day. So if you suck a lot right now, good. If you suck a lot right now, that's good. Because that means that you've got more room to improve, right? You've got more room to grow. If you're already good, good. That means you're this close to being fucking great. The reason that Trent Harrison is speaking on Millionaire Mastermind Sunday is because he went from good to great. He had 450,000 followers. He doubled his following in the last six months. Give this guy a round of applause. That's right. I'ma put my boy on. I just like that, dog. I'ma put my boy on. Guys, you're this close to being great. If you're already great, good. That means you're a hop, skipping, and jumping away from being the best in your industry. And isn't that the goal? I wanna be the best. I'm not in this business coaching game so I can compete with everybody else. I want it to be PT domination, everybody else. Cool, finding the one video that changes your life. Guys, you were literally one video away from a different life. For me, I've been posting on social media for nine plus years before I found the one video that literally started fucking everything for me. This video was just me fucking around and having fun during a filming session. I had stolen the idea from somebody that delivered it on a whiteboard with words, that they had no words in the video, so it was just a whiteboard video. This one video changed everything. I added my own personality to the video and I changed the scenes every 1.5 to three seconds. This one video generated me 24.7 thousand followers and taught me that I know what the fuck I'm doing and it gave me the ultimate belief in my own voice. This one video, um, it was, I opened the fucking door and I was like, never ever ever say these four words on sales calls. And then I'm like, it makes it sound like a dork and no one wants to buy your stuff. And then I'm like playing with Mr. Fluff and I'm like, hey John, it's nice to hear from you. I was literally just fucking around. I was like, I'm just gonna fuck around this filming session. 24.7 thousand followers, one video. And guys, I know that you know, thank you, thank you. One second. Good job, you Mark. Cole has one of those fucking videos too. Hey Cole, never fucking apologize for being yourself. People don't like how you speak, how you think, how you act, those just aren't your fucking people. Find better people and be yourself, right? I was one video. And now he's got a t-shirt, it's like his fucking brand. He's got a tattoo on his back, right? One video, you guys, that's all it takes. You're one video away from a completely different life, I'm telling you. Cool, one video away. Everybody repeat after me, I'm one video away. I'm one video away. I'm one video away. One video away. That's right, yes you are. Cool, setting goals for your own social media growth. And again, this video isn't gonna play because of my life, but that's okay, because I'll tell you what's in it. In this video, I said, I'm so fucking grateful that I hit 100,000 followers on Instagram. It feels so good to know that my voice is reaching hundreds of thousands of people and that my social media is growing each and every single day. If you're using the 10K Mastermind or the Millionaire Mastermind, you know the letter to yourself I fucking do that. Ask Kirsten. I can recite my letter to myself in the morning and the evening. I do it every day. And in the letter to myself now, it doesn't say 100,000, it says more, but I'm not gonna tell you because it's my goal, not yours, okay? But I will say, that if you have a goal and you remind yourself of it every fucking day, it will happen. And I was doing this back when I had not 100,000 followers. I did this video when I had 35,000 followers. I also have a video where I had 10,000 followers and I'm like, I'm so fucking grateful that I hit 25,000 followers. I listen to it every day. Guys, it's about the vision. You guys, who here understands the importance of vision? Now, who here listens to their vision every fucking day? Keep your hand up if you do. Look at Trent, look at, look, look at some of the top performers in this room, have their hand up. You guys get that? So with social media growth, like I'll be honest, I learned this from Cole. Cole used to set social media growth targets all the time. It's because like in the Millionaire Mastermind um, uh, coaches chat, we have this like small group where we like share our goals and Cole would share his goals and every time he shared his goals, it always said like 1.1 million on TikTok. And I'm like, why the f is he setting social media goals? And I was like, oh yeah, dumbass, you can set goals for everything. So then I started setting my own social media goals. It was 10,000 followers at first, and then it was 25,000, then it was 50,000, then it was 100,000. Now it's a lot more than that. I'm not gonna tell you until it's done, then I'm gonna show you the video that'll actually play, okay? You guys need to set goals. You guys need to set targets. Why do we set goals in the gym? Because it gives us a target to shoot for. You must have a target for your social media. You fucking must. When you don't have an audience, everything in your business is hard, all of it. 
Lead generation is like pulling fucking teeth and growing your business seems impossible. How many of you guys have ever felt like that? Like, holy fuck, this is hard. It's because you don't have an audience. When you have an audience, everything is easy. Now, when I say everything is easy, let's be honest, you know, there's periods in time where it's not easy and you book 100 calls with people that just want free shit. So it's not like it all, it's all the easy Dawson you've been there. I get it, okay? But I'd rather have those problems than have no fucking calls in my calendar, you feel me? I'd rather have those fucking problems. When you have an audience, everything is easy. When you don't have an audience, everything is hard. Lead generation is easy. Growing your business purely depends on your ability to get better at the skill of business. You must have social media growth as a primary motivating factor for your coaching business if you care about stepping into your power and impacting thousands of people's lives. So here's my rule for social media growth, okay? My rule is within reason, but outside of reach. That's my rule of all my goals. Within reason, but outside of reach. So if you have 300 followers and you're like, I'm gonna have a million by December. No, you're not, okay? You're not, it's not gonna happen. Instead, set a goal that's a little bit outside of your reach, but it is definitely within reason that you could achieve it. So if you have 300 followers, your goal is a thousand by December. That's pretty fucking reasonable, right? If you have 10,000 followers, your goal is 11K by December. That's pretty fucking reasonable. If you have 100,000, your goal is 120K by December. That's pretty fucking reasonable. 500K, your goal is 550, pretty fucking reasonable. Set a goal that's a little bit outside of your reach, but it's reasonable to achieve, and then set reminders of these goals fucking everywhere. I'm telling you, I can literally recite my vision video word for word for word for word as it comes out. Because it's just a part of my fucking brain now. And that's why shit just keeps happening. And the first thing in the video that it says, it says, this shit is happening fast to me right now. And my life is fucking happening really fast. I mean, it's like, it's crazy. Phone background, sticky notes, record a video, expressing gratitude. So every single day you're reminded of the destination that you were headed. So today we covered the commitment to mastery, understanding the social media algorithm, finding your voice on social media, creating your content strategy, the content creation process, auditing your own content, finding the one video that changes your life, and setting goals for your social media growth. Now I'm gonna leave you guys with this. For those of you guys that think a thousand views on a video sucks, this is a room full of a thousand people. Do you get that? So I understand, especially for those of you guys that are like really putting in effort on your social media, and you're like, why is my videos not getting the reach they deserve? That's what a thousand people looks like. 1,000 humans have consumed that piece of content. And if you get better, then it'll be 2,000. Then it'll be 3,000. Then it'll be 10,000. Kirsten and I went to Avril Lavigne, shameless. I actually fucking liked it. I don't care what you guys think about me. <laughs> <clears throat> and while we were sitting in the concert, our friend Hannah like, looks at me. She's like, hey. She always says funny shit. Hey. I was like, hey. She's like, look at how many people are here. She's like, there's 20,000. I was like, yeah, there's 20,000. She's like, you have 10 times that amount of people following you on social media. I was like, holy fuck. That's actually pretty crazy to consider, right? That's pretty crazy to consider. So if you have 10,000 followers, holy fuck. You got 10 times that amount of people following you. You had 10,000 views on a video, holy fuck. 10, 10 times the amount of people watch that video. That's a pretty cool perspective. And it's one that's like worth celebrating and it's worth one worth remembering. Cool, that's it.